Hey team, I love gambling. Who wouldn't, you know, getting stuff in exchange for not doing stuff, getting lucky. It's pretty good. And they got it in my favorite game, Pokemon. Some of my favorite moves, in fact, are gambling in Pokemon. I mean, there's a lot of gambling. Accuracy moves, focus blast, focus miss. As some of you may be familiar, my favorite type of move has always been, for some reason, I don't know, I'm a weirdo, I'm weird. It's always been multi-hit moves. They're super interesting. They've changed a lot over the generations. They're originally very bad. I think got a little less bad and kind of fluctuated here and there. Some of them good, some of them not so good. Some of them very, very bad. But now there's a lot of them that are really, really good because they have a lot of support. And I think that's really important for any type of move. If it's gonna get like a dedicated move archetype in a game like Pokemon is that it eventually gets like an engine built around it. And now we have all sorts of things like skill link, technician, abilities, a new item was just announced, the loaded dice, which also supports multi-hit moves. There's a lot of mechanics and nuance and involvement with these types of moves, and they're super cool. That's really all that needs to be said about it. So I want to go through today and kind of cover and document that history and the changes that they've gone over starting with the first generation because there's a ton of them and they were honestly kind of a joke at first but they just kept getting changes and they kept getting ideas for these types of moves that made them better and better ultimately into what we see today like skill link cloister pokemon using skill shot uh technician Berloom with its bullet seed you saw that on the on the new trailer with with loaded dice making it better so what we're gonna do is by generation, moves that were introduced, any mechanical changes that were made, and then in Gens Beyond 1, any patch notes that were made to previous moves, changes, and uh, ways that they were either better or worse in that. And then all the interactions that happened along the way. So let's start at the beginning. Obviously, Generation 1. It's the beginning of Pokemon, and it's an exciting time, and multi-hit moves, well, they 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 do exist. They they are in the game. They, they, they do have a few of them, and... Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much the, the synopsis of them right now. They're pretty bad. They're awful, I would say, in fact. Some of them are signature moves of certain Pokemon, uh, like Bone Meringue and Twin Needle. You know, everybody's favorite Twin Needle, but for the most part, they're, they're pretty bad. As far as mechanics go, so multi-hit moves in this case are anything hitting more than once multi multi hit moves and for the ones that are hitting between two and five times they are 37.5 percent chance respectively for two hits and three hits and then 12.5 percent respectively for four and five hits so it's three eighths three eighths one eighth one eighth so it's weighted towards two and three well, relatively heavily but the the luck is definitely not on the user's sides to get five it feels good when you hit five <laughs> feels really really good you know that, that that gambling adrenaline hits but usually you're going to be getting two or three a strong three-fourths of the time in fact one huge benefit for multi-hit moves in this generation is if the first strike crits they all crit and because of how crits were based off of speed in gen 1 this is actually semi-reliable but at its worst like a multi-hit theory attack now let's say you're running around on uh Fero or ride on or something uh you get the crit on the first one you get the crit on the fury attack this is awesome still hits twice this sucks i'm so mad what the heck pokemon i'm so mad at you but if you like get five crits like like that's just ridiculous but that that could happen that could happen so if one of them crits all of them crits substitute immediately ends the move that is pretty pretty unfun for these moves if you even if you were going to hit five times, if a substitute breaks as part of you hitting it, the move is automatically canceled. So substitute is a pretty hard counter for these types of moves. And then moves like counter and bide only calculate for the last hit of the multi-hit move. They do not calculate their double damage return based on the entirety damage of the move, just the last hit, no matter how many hits. Another thing that is a little weird is there's like five moves that are like exactly the same. There, there There's some coverage, just just a tiny bit here there's a couple of types involved but five of them are normal types two to five times no additional effect do just about the same thing don't worry even even better than just just listing them i've ranked them we have spike cannon up at the top it's a 20 base 100 accuracy comet punch 18 base 85 accuracy fury swipes 18 base 80 accuracy barrage 
Executors exclusive move. Everybody, everybody knows, everybody knows Executors got the sauce. It's got a, it's got an exclusive move. It's a multi-hit normal type move. It does nothing else. It's pretty cool. 15 base, 85% accuracy, and then all the way at the bottom is Fury Attack. 15 base, 85% accuracy. Now, the, the, this is my mostly personal ranking outside of Spike Cannon definitely being the best and Comet Punch soon after it. 5% accuracy, not a huge deal. I put Barrage above Fury Attack on this ranking because it's executor it's its special move it's pretty cool it's got a it's got a personal move throws little balls at you it's way better than fury attack obviously obviously barrage much much better than fury attack but these moves are all the same it, even even com compare the difference between the top and the bottom of this spike cannon and fury attack that is a 5% difference in power and a 15% difference in accuracy. Now, the jump to 100% accuracy is a big deal. However, if both of these moves connect, the actual damage output is not significant or reliable. Things are not looking good for these moves. On the other hand, other types of moves that we have are double kick. Double kick is a fighting type move. Hits twice, guaranteed. So this is not one of those two to five. Boomerang also in there. Not a uh, not a two to five. A double. Boomerang, pretty good move. Exclusive move for Marowak. Double kick. It's all right. It's like a like a mid range level move. I've certainly used it on Pokemon when I'm playing through the game, but late game, it's it's not in the picture at all. Unlike Marowak, which is probably using Boomerang. If you're using Marowak, Boomerang is seeing usage probably at the end of the game. That is if you're using Marowak. And then the big one, Twin Needle. Twin Needle, another other two two hitter bug type move, rare rare bug type move, along with Pin Missile. Pin Missile is technically not exclusive. Hits two to five times. Twin Needle only hits twice. Signature move of Beedrill, everybody's favorite Pokemon that should a lot of a lot of quotes around should should be good in Gen One, but it's garbage. It's very, very bad. You know, Beedrill, one of those Pokemon, one of those bug types, supposed to give you a little boost at the beginning of the game. As you keep moving, though, Beedrill falls off hard, and this move is quite similar. And it, it bears mentioning that Pin Missile is much different in this gen, in terms of its actual stat line. Pin Missile is a lot stronger in recent gens, but in this generation, it is base 14 with 85% accuracy, and it is picked up by Beedrill and Jolteon. And that's decent, and it's something that, like, gives Jolteon the tiniest bit of an edge, but even with Twin Needle and Pin Missile, Beedrill is not salvageable in Gen 1. That is just not good enough at all. Beedrill's pretty pretty pathetic, and these moves are honestly pretty pathetic as well. Twin Needle can poison. him. It's locked onto Beedrill though. Too bad. And these these moves are they're not in a great place coming out of Gen 1. Beedrill's not very good. Uh, Jolteon's okay. Uh, Marowak, okay. And then a lot of these moves are on Pokemon that are just never gonna use them. They've got they've got tons of other things in their arsenal, like like Executor. Executor's never gonna be seen using Barrage, a normal type move. Not 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 a chance on that one. Executor, decent Pokemon, but I'm not gonna be using uh, Barrage. Normal type moves in review for Gen One, they get a bad rap. They're not very good. There is definitely that gambling boon there where. <laughs> You either get a crit or you roll five and you do some big time damage. That's definitely worth it. Even even the worst of them, uh, 14 pin missile, 14 pin missile, that's gonna be 70 base if you hit all of them. Which is, yeah, bug type 70 base damage, sign me up. But that's one eighth of the time that you actually get 70. And let's be real, 70 is, if you wanna hit a big move like that, 70 is on the lower side. So, not great. Cool idea. Let's see where they go next time. Moving into Gen 2. Gen 2 with multi-hit moves. So, bit of a nerf here. Each strike is critical dependent now. So, each strike calculates for crit independently. They all could still be crits, but you're the luckiest gamer in the world if you get all five crits, and you get all five, and then they all crit. On the other hand, they get a bit of a buff as well. They do break through sub now, so if they were going to continue and substitute is up, it breaks the substitute and does a little bit of extra chip damage. Just not a monstrous or anything, but Substitute is not a non-factor, and this helps. Every, every little thing is gonna help. There's a new item, King's Rock, which right now, even if uh, you hit all five, King's Rock is a 12% flinch chance. And that's King's King's Rock's main effect is that moves have a 12% chance of flinching in this generation. Even if you're using a multi-hit move, that move is flat. This will change, which is why I'm mentioning King's Rock at all. Because King's Rock is gonna, gonna get better. And the new hold item, some niche interaction, Focus Band, which has a 12% chance in Gen 2 to block a Pokemon from knocking your Pokemon out and leaving you with one health. If Focus Band activates off a of multi-hit move, it blocks the entire move. Even if the first multi-hit activates Focus Band, it is blocked from there on. They got some new moves. 
big, big new moves happening. Bone Rush. Bone Rush? What, what the hell is this? Marowak learns Bone Meringue in this generation almost 30 levels earlier than it does Bone Rush. And that might seem weird because Bone Meringue hits twice, has like a relatively high base. Bone Rush, unless you hit it five, is just by the books weaker than Bone Meringue every time. It is a worse move by all metrics. And for some reason, they gave it to Marowak. Not only did they give it to this Pokemon, but it is much, much later. It learns it learns it like late 40s, near the 50s even, and it's been rocking Bone Rush since 25. Since level 25, this Pokemon has been rocking a way better move, and they're like, but how about we give you something worse? So now Bone Rush is in the mix, a 2 to 5 ground type move, adding, adding to some of the type coverage. Pretty cool. We've got like fighting, normal, ground bug it's getting pretty 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 wild in terms of in terms of multi-hit coverage then beat up this is sneasel's multi-hit move this one this one's really cool it's a is a 10 base damage and then you get like an attack for each party member beat up is super super cool and in its original debut generation this is something i learned for this subject is that it's typeless and so it doesn't it doesn't do super effective damage based on dark also doesn't break substitute unlike the other multi-hit moves but every pokemon in your party gets like a like they they, they all get a word in sneasel gets a word in in my party of five Beedrills, each one of them is going to get a word in on, on beat up. It's very, very nice. Really cool move. We'll hear more about it later. And then lastly in the new moves, lastly, perhaps least, say very much least, is Triple Kick, Hitmontop's signature move. This is like a ramping physical move, and the idea is Hitmontop is like charging up a spin. One, two, three, wham, bam, bam, kind of thing. It starts with 10 damage, ramps into 20, and then ramps into 30. This one also stopped by substitute, unlike the other multi-hit moves. Not that good. Ultimately gets 60 base. I mean, now Hitmontop's got three legs, so it probably needs to use triple kick, but it's it's like in the same running as double kick. This is not an, a fantastic move by any means. Got some patch notes for, for moves introduced in earlier gens. Check out the patch notes. Twin Needle can now poison Steel types, which Steel types weren't in the original game, but I'm, it can happen. Twin Needle can poison Steel type. Now we've been all been wondering the million dollar question, was this buff enough to elevate Beedrill into any better of status? No, of course not. It, it's terrible. Beedrill's the worst. It's still bad. This, this, this B is not doing anything. It's, it's awful. Like, no, not a not a chance. Too bad. Beedrill, you suck. It's all the notes for Gen 2. Now, moving on to Gen 3, got abilities. We have lots of new moves going on. Gen 3 was a big deal in terms of Pokemon upgrades. While Gen 2 originally felt like kind of a expansion for Gen 1, Gen 3 did a lot of from the ground up additions, and that certainly shows, even in something as specific as multi-hit moves. So with the addition of abilities, we have interactions going on, like effect spore. Each strike of a multi-hit move activates a on target ability like effect spore, like color change. Yeah, this is a nerf also. This this is a negative effect for the multi-hit moves. Cause if I'm using my comet punch and I go to sleep off of Berlum's effect spore on the first punch, comet punch is over and I'm asleep now and I'm angry. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly angry. A niche interaction, because it's only on Kecleon, but the, the same is true. It would change types on the first hit in this generation, and if you're using a move that was not effective against itself, yeah, it would it would receive that damage decrease on the second type after it. In, in great news, King's Rock is now every hit. Every hit applies on King's Rock. So King's Rock's flinch chance percent applies on every hit. So you have, some, you have a big chance. If you make the actual move of getting five hits and you have King's Rock, that's a lot of chance to flinch. You're you're really gambling. Same with Shell Bell. Shell Bell effect applies on every hit. Just super, super cool. Shell Bell, you receive a little bit of health and every time you do damage, you kind of like have like a, a lifesteal effect going on. And Shell Bell works for all of it. It's not just the last hit, like some of some of the stuff going on. Kind of kind of new moves and uh like generation overlook going on here. Lots of new types. They introduced just a bunch of new types. Normally hit moves were never big on additional effects, but where they are right now, it's a big deal that they got some type coverage across the board. We got Rock Blast, a rock type multi-hit move. 25 base, 80 accuracy in this generation. It gets buffed later, mid, but it's a rock type, so you're doing some damage to things super effectively. 
Maybe if you're if you're if you're smart about that. But it's not a nor it's not another normal type one. It's not, an, not another freaking normal type multi head. It's a Pokemon are using Rock Blast. Got Bullet Seed. Also pretty good. This one actually having 100% accuracy. This move is actually pretty good. Bullet Seed is decent, and it is a decent Grass type, and it is on a TM, which in terms of usability of the move helps significantly. And I found myself when I was playing games like in uh, Leaf Green, the Bullet Seed TM is attainable relatively early, and because it's on a TM, the pool of Pokemon that you can just slap it on is greatly increased. So Bullet Seed was a usually pretty early game option to just get some Grass type coverage, and it helped out a ton. That move is actually good in the right circumstance. Later, they'll continue to move more of uh, these multi-hit moves onto TMs. Gives them, I guess, more exposure. Doesn't make them better by any means, but, but just by being on a TM, a lot of Pokemon get access to moves exclusively through TM, and when they add something to TM, it greatly increases that pool, and certain Pokemon get covered that they never would have gotten before. Like, a good example here is Bullet Seed going on to Octillery. Octillery Hard pressed to use a grass type move. Just interesting mix up. You know, the more types that a Pokemon has access to, more tools in its toolbox. Also in the same vein, Icicle Spear. Not a TM, 100% accuracy. This is a Cloister signature move for some reason, at least right now. Only the, the Cloister line can use it and tough break for other Pokemon, because this, this one's decent. Ice, ice is a good type. Ice has always been a good type to hit people with. Not as good as Ice Beam. Of course, yeah, there's there's no way it, it goes over Ice Beam. Ice Beam is amazing. Icicle Spear is important because of the benefits that it receives later. So now we have Rock, Grass, Ice, and then we get Arm Thrust, Fighting type move. This one, pretty weak, 100% accuracy, 15 base. The 100% accuracy really, really helps here because that's usually the, the first major hurdle they have to get over. And it's, it's just the same, a fighting type version of the multi-hit moves. That was four new types of multi-hit moves introduced to this generation. Usually a Pokemon now has a, like generally has a reason to use a multi-hit move at some point in leveling up. The snowball is rolling with it. Let's look at the patch notes for this generation. Twin Needle can no longer poison steel types. This is so sad. Beedrill, just get the hell out of here. Not really a patch note for the move or for an ability that was introduced. Beat up bypasses Wonder Guard, even though it is a dark type move, but typeless damage goes through Wonder Guard and beat up provides typeless damage. So that's nice. Triple kick, for some reason, I don't know why, they gave it an inadvertent nerf where it now has three accuracy checks instead of the one. It does go through substitute now, but you have to get the accuracy of 90 accuracy three times in a row to get the maximum damage. It's like, just why? Pokemon, why? It was already so, so bad. Awful. It's even worse now. That's wonderful. And those are the patch notes for Gen 3. So we're seeing a lot more types being introduced, some additional effects going on, more interactions, more usability. This is good. We are seeing an increase in usability of these moves and their frequency across the board. I like Gen 3. I like Gen 3 a lot because specifically because of the five moves they've introduced. I'm using Arm Thrust on my Hariyama. I'm using Rock Blast on like Graveler or Rhydon. Using Bullet Seed on Breloom. Maybe my Grass type starter if I'm playing Leaf Green. I can get my hands on a Cloister. Perhaps I use Icicle Spear, but it's cool. New stuff is going on, and the future is starting to look a little bit brighter for these types of moves. Let's move on to Gem 4. Gem 4 we got a big change in the ability Skill Link. Skill Link is an ability that makes it so all of your multi-hit moves go from the spread of 2 to 5, specifically to 5, if it is on that scale. So moves like Double Kick are not affected by Skill Link, but Icicle Spear, Rock Blast, Fury Attack, Spike Cannon, all of your, your classics, they are now five. If they, if you pass the accuracy check, they are five. Not as direct of a boost as skill link. Skill link is the multi-hit ability. We get technician, which raises those low bases. Anything below 60 gets boost. So technician is ability you're going to be seeing a lot of later, but it is in the game. Like Scizor is a big technician user. Boosting those uh, lower base damage moves. They do apply on every hit of a multi-hit move, so every theory attack is going to be 1.5 from now on. Get a new Razor Fang item, King Rock clone. It's essentially the same thing, but it, it hits for every move. The same gimmick, it's it's the exact same gimmick. It's it's an evolution item, technically, as well, but they have another one of these gimmick items. Focus Sash, new item introduced. If you are full health, you cannot be below, dropped below one. If you have a Focus Sash and you are at 100% health, you cannot be dropped below one health on one hit. And currently this applies for multi-hit moves, which kind of sucks with Skill Link being introduced because Skill Link later will enable a lot of Pokemon to eat through Focus Sash. But in Generation 4, that is just not the case. And that's a pretty hard deal to break, I would say, because... 
you know, a lot of Pokemon are going to get an extra word in against Cloyster, the one skill link user right now, because Cloyster can't break through their Focus Ash. Unfortunate. Let's just see where that goes. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's it's good good news. Good good news in the future, but we'll just see where that goes. And the new moves. Only one new move this generation. We got Double Hip, which is like double kick for normal types. Don't really know why they added it outside of flavor. Actually, that's a pretty good reason. I'll I'll, I'll give it to them on that one. Ambipom uses Double Hip. Weezing uses Double Hip. I mean, like Ambipom, bam, bam. Weezing, two heads, bam, bam. Pretty cool. 35 base, 90 accuracy. And Ambipom does get access to technician eventually. And Ambipom users will eventually get access to technician, which helps it out a little bit. Not really any patch notes on older moves in this one outside of our favorite our favorite move, Wind Needle. Wind Needle is now a 36% chance to poison because both hits have the chance to poison. And the 20% on both, 36 overall, this is amazing. Was this able to elevate Beedrill's status? No, no, not at all. Not, not, it's it's a boost, but not a good one. Not, not good enough to do anything for Beedrill. Beat Up is no longer Sneasel's move. Beat Up gets moved around some Pokemon. And now there's a couple of Pokemon with access to Beat Up. Right now it's just Houndoom, but it gets passed around in future generations. It was taken away from Sneasel. Sorry, Sneasel, you have to share your toys. And that's it for Gem 4 on multi-head moves. A huge boost in this generation with Skill Link, and that's major. Skill Link, if it gets moved around at all, is going to make a huge difference in the way that these moves are used because Oyster right now, Icicle Spear just became a mainstay of a move just, just because of Skill Link. It hits five times every time. Wow, that's a really high base. With Rock Blast, Spike Cannon, all of these are very high damaging moves now, and especially the ones with the higher accuracy. <laughs> Could be good. Let's see where that goes. Let's look at Gen 5. Gen 5 did see that nerf to Focus Sash where if you hit through the entire health bar, Focus Sash breaks. And even even if it's like you do 25% every time, you knock out the Pokemon if you hit all the moves, which is great because this is a great way to counter Focus Sash. Focus Sash is pretty tough to get around, especially if you're like a big time sweeper. And Cloyster does the job. Cloyster being like the 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 poster Pokemon for for Skill Link. Got lots of new interactions, all these new abilities. There's items that come into play and there's hidden abilities also which not that they're specifically adding new abilities, but it increases the pool of Pokemon and the abilities that they get. Technician Breloom, a crowd favorite, is now available. Sinchino has both Technician and Skill Link through its hidden ability, so the pool of Pokemon is raising that can get actually decent usage out of these moves and where they would prefer to use them over other moves. Abilities that are, are going to come into play here, weak armor, justified, they uh, proc for every hit, which you'll see like beat up on a justified is something that people like using because you get that gigantic attack boost off of justified. Rocky helmet also works this way. <laughs> is a little, probably, probably pretty frustrating. You know, you do your, you do your five times multi-hit move and you take five chips from Rocky helmet. You're like, what am I even doing here? So Zipper does not work this way for whatever reason. It, it's not considered the same as the on hit every hit ability. So we got some new moves. Also, dual chop. It's really dragon double kick at 40 base, which is a little bit better. It's all right. 40 90. It's it's okay. It is dragon type. It's it's exciting to see dragon type enter the mix on multi hit moves. And everybody's favorite, another normal multi hit move with no additional effects. Tail slap. This is Sinchino's signature move and benefits both from technician and skill link. And when if, if you've if you've played like a playthrough or maybe a nuzlocke and you happen to get one of these two Sinchinos on your team with either technician or skill link, tail slap is not a joke at all. It's quite intimidating in fact and then we get gear grind cling clang signature move is a 50 85 it's also all right for a 50 base on both of the hits and it's steel stab it's actually pretty good i don't i don't hate it and cling clang is cool bunch of gears with phases on them nice do have a lot of patch notes on this one they changed a lot of the individual statistics of various moves that were introduced in previous gens. Bone Rush, getting an accuracy boost. Great, great news for bone enthusiasts. Beat Up now has this really cool formula to determine how much damage it's going to use, and it's subject to the user's stat boosts. Just adding some more intricacy there, more, more ways to play, essentially. The triple type of move, and there's only one type of triple move now, but the later triple move that is introduced also is subject to this change. They only have one accuracy check under skill link. Like, great 
that they made this change because the the one triple kick that's in the game you know it really it really needed this boost it really needed this boost specifically and the later pokemon that get this move triple axel and whoa huge deal Icicle Spear gets a massive damage boost. It goes up from being a 10 base, which was the main thing keeping it below Ice Beam, maybe not chosen for your for your Skill Link Cloister, is now 25 base, which on full Skill Link Cloister is a 125 base move. Destructive power, way more than Ice Beam, 100% accuracy. That is nuts. Bullet Seed goes from 10 to 25 as well, is another pretty pretty big boost just out of the game. Works really well for Balloon, pretty good stuff, and Rock Blast gets an accuracy update from 80 to 90 very good stuff very good stuff across the board for a lot of these not really any nerfs going on in this gen uh just some new interactions that might make them harder to pilot in very specific scenarios but for the most part they were all just power leveled they are starting to look really really good gen 5 was a great generation for these moves even though it's not a huge change something that was changed in gen 5 was the actual rates of each multi-hit move they have a uh, document on the chart here so it used to be three eights three eights one eighth and one eighth and now it is 35 35 15 15 so a slight increase on the heavier side of multi-hit moves for the generic pokemon not gigantic but it helps it helps every little bit's gonna count here because it's adding up to something great let's look into gen 6 now not a ton going on here they're in a great place there is not much being changed the main and this this is technically a multi-hit move the the main big thing that happened in gen 6 was mega kangaskhan players during gen 6 i was i was playing some comp during gen 6 mega kangaskhan is a little bonkers Every move that it used in its mega form became a multi-hit move, barring some extreme examples. Yeah, Mega Kangaskhan is like inadvertently the like the the hero of multi-hit moves because of its abilities. Every move is attacking twice. Pin Missile gets a big buff here, kind of in line with the ones in Gen 5. It goes from 14 base to 25 base and 85 accuracy, 95 accuracy. So for Pokemon, they're going to take full advantage of Pin Missile. It's definitely worth using now. And new shield moves have been introduced, and they are also in the pool of moves that only proc one. Spiky Shield, currently Chestnut's special move, and Aegis Slash's King Shield. They both have negative downsides for the attacker when they are hit with a move, but it only procs once, so you're not getting minus five attack when you go into Aegis Slash's King Shield, which, you know, thanks. Thanks that they made that one concession. That would be absolutely detrimental. I would probably, well, I, I guess I wouldn't just forfeit right there, but I, I go in for one attack on Aegis Slash and suddenly I'm minus five. Great work. I'm in a, um, in a terrible spot now. And this also was a generation that added Water Shuriken, which is the first, I guess, kind of first, that uh, multi-hit move that has a outside of effect than just do damage. Now, Beat Up, I would also kind of consider in this one where there's like interactions on the damage itself. But Water Shuriken is the first modified multi-hit move. It has priority. It is a plus one priority water type. It's like Greninja's special thing. It's 15 base, 100 accuracy. Something I learned also that's interesting. Apparently Axel Gore gets access to this move. I had no idea that Pokemon other than Greninja could use it. And that's cool because Axel Gore is a ninja throwing its little water shuriken. I love that. It's a pretty cool move. Saw a an appearance in Smash Bros. That was awesome. You know, Greninja going, making its little... I I, I I can't make the sound, but it would charge up the shuriken and throw it. A little, little Smash Bros. appearance. That's all for Gen 6. Not a ton going on here. Kangaskhan kind of ran the track on this generation in, inadvertently, even though it's not really in the in the mainstay of these. It was technically multi-hitting, so I, I thought it worth mentioning because of how much of a meta presence it had. We got Water Shuriken. And that is, I think, worth mentioning in this that... From now on, and hopefully in the future, they are adding a little bit of complexity to multi-hit moves. This is the first there is some more complexity in moves added in the future, which is just a good thing to see. These Now that they're like really taking shape, I like that these moves are also seeing some additional complexity and ways to use them and things that are maybe less gambly about them. And that's great because the plus one priority always procs, even if you get two hits in. So... Something to think about there. Let's move on to Gen 7, the next one after 6. There's a new move, Mel Metal's Double Iron Bash, which is just for Mel Metal. Not seeing a ton of usage here. And it was only in Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu. You cannot use Mel Metal, even though it's so those two games 
classified as Gen 7 by all metrics, but they cannot really interact at all with Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and Moon. So Double Iron Bash is a cool move and sees usage from Melmetal in Gen 8, but right now it is limited to those games and because Melmetal had the whole Pokemon Go thing going on. But 60 base, 2 hits, and 30% flinch on both moves. That's bonkers. You are getting a flinch a decent amount of the time, and you're always hitting that 60-60, so just great work. Water Shuriken gets inadvertently changed. Uh, it, it's, it's like a direct change, but it's because of something else. From the Battle Bond ability on Greninja, it's now a special move. Water Shuriken was a physical type move. Now it is a special move, and it gets some additional boosts when Ash Greninja comes in. It always hits three times for some reason, and it gets a base damage increase, which good for, good for Greninja. Greninja's cool. It deserved it. Maybe not as much as Pikachu. I like Greninja. It's it's cool. It's and it, I like that they are messing around with things even further in here. Another weird change that I, I found was that Rock Blast is now bulletproof. It was not bulletproof in Gen 6 or affected by bulletproof. Rock Blast was not affected by bulletproof in Gen 6, but now it is for some reason. And it was a relatively mid move, and I guess the, the bulletproof Pokemon there, they're, they're thrilled getting any any more moves. Every move counts, I guess, when it comes to bulletproof, but it was reclassified for some reason, which, you know, very, very, very interesting. Okay, and that's all for Gen 7. Let's move on to the final, most recent generation, Gen 8 Sword and Shield, fun stuff. Uh, right out of the gate, a bunch of moves were removed from the game. Awesome! They took out a bunch of moves. This is so cool. I'm I'm so happy about that. On the other hand, though, a lot of multi-hit moves were slapped on either TMs or TRs, the new uh, disposable type of TM. So they do have increased usability, the ones that stayed. And there's some new ones also, which are all very cool. So... The Pokemon pool has been increased once again because a lot of them got uh, retroactively put on two TMs. So lots of more Pokemon are using Rock Blast, for example. And then we get some new ones. A Dragon Darts, Dragapult's special move. It's a pretty standard double hitter. Uh, it does have a specifically double battle interaction where it, if there are two Pokemon up and it's not uh, subject to some exclusivity, instead of hitting twice on one Pokemon, it'll hit each Pokemon once. Pretty cool. Dragapult's an awesome Pokemon. That's a really cool move. It's got like a little, it's got a little baby in each head and it shoots the, the dragon darts at him. Pretty cool stuff. Triple Axel, that triple move I was talking about earlier. This one is actually good. Triple Axel is really, really good. Instead of 10, 20, 30, it is 20, 40, 60. Just a 120 base if all three hit. It's got 90% accuracy for the checks. Very good. Really, really good. If you get to that final hit, you're in great shape on Triple Axel. A lot of Pokemon that it gets on also because this is a move tutor move. This one and Scale Shot, which I'm covering next, and Dual Wing Beat. That uh, also raised the usability. There was it, was it was all part of the DLC, so I guess a little bit locked behind the DLC because the move tutor was in the DLC area, but these Pokemon moves saw a lot of usability because of that. And then Skill Shot which is another multi-hit move with an effect on it. If you use Skill Shot, as long as it goes through, you get plus one speed and minus one defense, and it's a dragon type. This is a great effect. Getting plus one speed off of a just damaging move, even if it it's going to hit twice, it is going to not be so good all the time, but you get that benefit every time. Plus one speed, minus defense. And a lot of the time, this move is being used by sweepers that are just here for the speed, where the defense is like, okay, like that kind of sucks, but I am here for the speed and I can just keep cranking out scale shots until it's time to go. Great move. Glad that they are adding moves like this one in Dragon Door so they have additional interaction. Super cool for the archetype of move. Very exclusive addition. We have Surging Strikes. Always hits three times. All three hits crit. It ignores defense boosts because of crits. And then it's on Urshifu, which gives it Unseen Fist. So this move always goes through Protect, Protect type, type moves, but it's on Urshifu. It's Urshifu exclusively, the, the water type Urshifu. Very, very good move. Urshifu is going to want to run this. And then finally, we got Dual Wing Beat, which is a, it's a decent move. It's a 40-90 double hit 
physical type uh, flying type move. A lot of Pokemon get access to this and a lot of flying types, this becomes like the most advantageous flying type move for them to use where they didn't have a ton of super good options before that. And now they have access to dual wing beam. So a lot of moves added here, not many changes. They haven't really made any changes to the formula in a long time, but they keep adding moves with increased complexity. I think it's great. I'm thrilled for this. Looking into the future, they just added loaded dice. It was shown in the trailer, loaded dice doesn't show exactly how. It increases the chances of multi-hit moves hanging out on the higher side of it, but it also makes me think maybe more are coming. Hopefully more are coming. More types, maybe? Fairy type multi-hit move could be good. I would love to see a fairy type multi-hit move game freak. That would that would make my day. Put it on uh, El Creamy. I don't know. It's one of my, one of my favorites. That about covers it. Multi-hit moves have seen a ton of changes over the years from Gen 1 when they were just like a gambling effect thrown in for the sake of it and all the moves were just actual garbage outside of very specific instances all the way up until Gen 8 and Gen 9 when they have a ton of support. Certain Pokemon are built for using uh, like skill link, multi-hit moves, technician, all sorts of interactions, lots of types being covered. And we got 11 types covered in the end. And hopefully they, they, they get around the entire wave, like with, with Terra types, a multi-hit move for every type. It would be great. They're in a great place. The, the future looks bright for them. That's all I got for you on this one. Uh, if I missed anything, or if you think I covered something wrong. Uh, some of the, some of this stuff was relatively subjective, and this has always been a, a strangely like interesting subject for me, this, this type of move specifically. But you think I got anything wrong, uh, let me know in the comments. And if you like this style of video, I'll keep pumping them out because this format is super, super interesting to me. And I had a ton of fun doing the, the, the field work for this video. That's it, y'all. I'll see y'all next time. Have a good one.